This is the front line of a war waged on Tennessee soil, where common men rise up for a cause and volunteers answer a call for help. The enemy is Geomyces destructens, a fungus that thrives in cold environments like caves and the cause of a deadly disease that is killing bats by the millions, white nose syndrome. White nose syndrome is still a very new disease. There are a lot of things we don't know that we wish we did. What they do know is the fungus lives in caves where bats hibernate for the winter. With body temperatures that drop to just above the ambient cave temperature and immune systems that are suppressed to conserve energy, hibernating bats are perfect targets for the fungus. And because they congregate in clusters, the disease can spread easily and quickly. Bats are very social animals, so in the wintertime, they congregate next to each other in real tight clusters, and it spreads from the contact from bat to bat. Um, but if they do uh, latch onto a cave wall that has the fungus on it, they can not contract it that way. It invades their skin, and it causes them to arouse throughout the wintertime much more frequently, and ultimately it causes the bats to starve, and they die. This is the latest weapon in the war against this deadly fungus, a man-made, cleanable cave. This will allow us to actually clean a cave and remove the fungus in the cave from one winter to the next, and hopefully that will minimize or hopefully eliminate the likelihood they contract it from the cave itself. White nose syndrome is about a three-year scenario. We have year one where we find it, and it's really not until year three where we have the mass mortality where you lose 90 plus percent of the bats at, at a particular site. So we're hopeful that by keeping the artificial cave clean, we'll be able to sort of maintain that year one where you have fungus coming in, but it, it never has a chance to build up in the environment and cause that mass mortality event. The cave, built by the Nature Conservancy near an existing hibernation cave in Montgomery County, is the first of its kind. There have been other artificial caves built to house bats specifically, but this is the first artificial cave designed as a hibernation site. It's a, a bit more of a challenge from an engineering standpoint. Good thing there's nothing rock on it. That's where the volunteers came in. Engineers and construction managers from companies like Panatoni and Summit pitched in to help with the cave design. A lot of the guys spent a ton of their own personal time. We would squeeze in meetings in the middle of the day after, after hours to make things happen. The challenge was creating a cave that's functional, cost-effective, and able to be replicated. After many hours of work, they decided to use a modified concrete box culvert, typically used to allow water to pass under a roadway. Basically, a big square concrete pipe cut into sections that were prefabricated and hauled to the site. It was highly modified. We, we had to close up both ends, and they had uh, form liners that we put in it, which uh, created a texture in the concrete so the concrete wasn't smooth, so that the bats had some purchase to grab a hold of inside. It's like Legos, but they don't fit as perfectly. We put the bottom pieces on, and then we started setting top pieces on, although they did meet up pretty decently. We had some, some grouting and some adjusting to do in order to, uh, to get this thing to seal up airtight and watertight uh, so that it would create the correct environment. In order to make this bat cave work, you've got to be able to keep it the right temperature, and that's done by controlling airflow. Cool air comes down through the entrance and settles through the cave. There's a vent at the upper end of the cave which draws any warm air out. This baffle right here keeps that cold air trapped on this side of the cave. It also protects it from being sucked back up through the opening by any winds or currents on the outside. This baffle, however, traps warm air over here. There's no vent, so it stays about 5 to 10 degrees warmer than this side of the cave, which means you end up with two bat habitats in one cave. There will be airflow constantly moving through this thing, although very slowly. Um, and we have these different structures on the ceiling just to create very small changes in temperature and humidity. A natural cave wouldn't have a perfectly flat surface. It has dips and valleys and domes. And within those, you'll have very small changes in temperature and relative humidity. And these bats will select a site because it's a degree or two warmer or cooler, or just a small change in relative humidity. And we tried to create that same scenario where there is a variety of microhabitats for these bats. Rainwater is trapped and piped to a catch basin to give the bats drinking water. The cave is also wired with thermal and infrared video cameras to monitor the bat's activity without disturbing them, allowing biologists to gather even more data on hibernating bats. 
during their hibernation period, bats are really sensitive to human disturbance and really disturbance of any kind. So even if they're not moving, if they're warming up or cooling down, um, we'll be able to pick that up on camera. Ultrasonic bat calls are being broadcast to help entice bats into the cave. So far, bats have flown in and out, but it will probably be at least a year before they begin living there. In the meantime, biologists watch and wait, hoping for the best. If this project is successful, we'll be able to save, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of bats just at this site. And if we sort of are able, able to prove these concepts, we can treat this as a pilot project and build these things everywhere. I'm Ken Tucker on Tennessee's Wild Side.